and welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to be using Bob Ross oil paints for this painting and it's a classic called Through the Window, a lovely winter scene. I masked up my canvas to look like a window and then I apply a very thin even coat of liquid white and be sure to keep this on really nice and thin. Don't overdo it and I've got some videos that I'll link to down below that shows you how I apply it and how to test your own canvases but Always use those fingertips just to test and see how much you've got. My first colours are Prussian blue and a little black. Tap it well on the palette, get them well mixed and then apply them to that top right hand corner first and I like to build up from a light blue colour and then slowly add more layers and try and get a little more interest in that sky. Leave some patches of light and dark and build up the colour as you go down the canvas. Uh, but make sure everywhere's got a little touch of blue. Somewhere in the, the middle area of my painting, I want to get a bright patch of light to look like it's coming through from the back. And I start applying a little bit of titanium white and you'll need to load your brush quite frequently to do this. It will sink into the canvas quite quickly. So apply plenty and build up that brightness. Now blend that patch of light, make it really smooth. No hard edges, no brush marks, just a lovely glow in the background. Now I'm gonna start work on my fir trees and I need to mix up a color of titanium white, Prussian blue, and add a little black into this and mix it really well. This is gonna become our mid-tone blue those trees. I'll do one lighter and I'll be doing one darker but this is the the middle color of those three trees. So for the lighter of the three trees I'm going to add a little bit of white and I'm doing it just to the side of that patch of color we just made. There are two ways I like to paint fir trees and I'm going to show you both so uh, method one is to take the the handle of your brush they start out the same way and Mark the center line of your fir trees. It's important to know where they start and where they stop. Because if you don't know where they start and where they stop, well, you could just run out of position. And I use my fan brush just to really anchor that center line. And then you want to hold your brush out and up. I'm going to use just the corner. And these are what we call uppy trees. In other words, they've got a little bit of a smile to them. And I stay on the same corner all the time. You can see I'm just pressing and I made a little color adjustment here because you don't always get the right color first time and I stay on the same corner. I don't flip my brush backwards and forwards and I'm doing a small zigzag so I'm going backwards and forwards across the center line of my tree. Backwards and forwards and I might flip my brush over and as I come down a little more pressure on the brush. Press a little harder, get a little more paint make the brush smile a little bit more and then pick up a nice light color brush I use that one for the center of my painting the bright spot and I'm just gonna just gonna pound it out and get some nice misty effects going. I want this tree to look lovely and distant now I'm gonna reload my fan brush with that lovely mid blue color that I made and this is going to be method two and it starts off very similar um, I want to know where the center line is so I just use the fan brush just to mark that top to bottom and I want it to be a little higher than the first tree and the same position with that brush you want to be facing it away from you get it the corner into the center of the tree and you're doing little presses with it don't let the brush skid just press 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 and fill in the center first so no zigzagging just get a really good dark center and you may have to reload your brush several times you want plenty of paint on your brush and once you've got that middle established then you can come back and start adding all the little side branches and you can start to sort of widen out the tree a little bit more One little tip I'm going to give you is 
when you're laying out the shape of these trees, go for really lovely, clearly defined branches. You don't want to see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little branches because they're, they're tricky to highlight later on. You're looking for nice, clear shapes and then make these small adjustments to your tree. You can make it a little wider in some places. You can overlap it with the tree behind it. The last tree on that right hand side is the darkest one and I'm going to just skip through a little bit of this because I'm going to paint another one exactly the same as that but bigger on the left. I don't often wash my brushes when I'm painting, but I do dry clean them. And I'm going to use this fan brush just to pull out some of the shadows beneath that tree. So it doesn't need to be perfectly washed and dried. It can still have a little bit of that dark color into it. But it's important that you follow the lay of the land. In other words, think about how the land lies beneath the tree. Is it at an angle? Does it slope down? Does it slope up? And maybe I could have helped myself a little bit more by doing the middle tree first and then putting the land in under the darker tree but well it's just one of life's challenges isn't that i just stabbed in a few of the bigger bushes at the bottom of that tree and this time i've going to show you how to use a one inch brush to do that same effect so i'm just going to grab the very very bottom edge of those bushes and trees and just pull that paint out and get all sorts of lovely ripples in the ground and see how low i've come down because the tree on the left side is bigger and it's closer to us. So I want that to come in below the land on the right hand side. I'm just measuring the size of this tree because I want a tree that's bigger on the left. And I want it to be taller than the tallest tree on the right. And here we go, same method again, center line marked. And on that corner and tip the brush handle up and press, just press. You wanna use the back of the brush and it's sometimes useful when you're doing a bigger tree um, that you might run out of position a little bit. So I like to actually sometimes mark the widest point of my tree. So I might think here and here. So that'll be the widest it possibly could be. see my tree has grown nice and wide and I've covered up those little guide marks don't forget this tape on the left hand side so a little bit of my tree is going to be lost and I'm just going to take it down that little bit lower just a little bit short before and you want this tree nice and dark and you'll see in a moment when I put the highlights on the reason why for my highlight color I added more titanium white to my pale blue color and I used a dry clean fan brush but of course you see it's very sticky and very dry the titanium white paint is supposed to be very dry for mountains but it doesn't help when you come to highlighting and you can see that actually what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling off more of the dark paint than the highlight I'm sticking onto it so I need to thin the paint slightly and for this I'm going to use a little bit of the liquid white and a clean palette knife. Just take out a small amount and apply it to your palette and work it in with that dry clean fan brush. Now let's see how well we do. And you can see that again, just gentle pressure, barely touching, the paint now sticks and it just does a lovely job of highlighting this tree.
Now I'm going to do the bigger tree. And the reason why I want those lovely dark, clearly defined limbs is that it's easy to position the highlights. You can aim for the top of a branch where the snow would settle. And of course, being lovely and dark, all the highlights show up. One thing that can happen sometimes is over highlighting and I'm going to deliberately over highlight a portion of my tree and it's this piece here you can see I've gone over it and I'm going to go over it again a couple of times and this is something you should try and avoid at all costs is going back over and highlighting over and over again you just make a bit of a mushy mess and the fix is to take away that overly mixed paint. Don't just try and put more highlight on top, but scrape away that surplus paint and get down to a bit of drier canvas underneath. Dry clean the fan brush and then reapply the original dark blue color that we had on the tree. And it'll stick nice and easily. You've got rid of that thinned out highlight paint and re-darken that area and then you can simply come back in and carefully reapply the highlights. Don't forget to dry clean your brush between colors and don't forget there's some tape there as well. So you'll be losing some of this highlight when you pull the tape off. Whoops, I've given the secret away, haven't I? And there we go, an invisible repair. No one would have known the pickle we'd got ourselves into. And then finally, we can come in with that one inch brush again and pull out some of the dark color from the base of the tree. And I'm coming in below the level of the trees on that right hand side. And I'm following the lay of the land. The next part of my painting is to paint the birch trees. And I'm going to mix up some black and some Van Dyke brown on a really good dark chocolatey brown color for this. Mix it up very well. Now plan the position of these birch trees just like we did with the fir trees. And I like to use the short blade of my knife. To scrape out the position of the tree trunks. The one on the left is slightly thinner, so it's about one and a half knife widths across at the base. The tree on the right, I want to be slightly bigger, and that's going to be at least a couple of widths of the knife at the base of the tree, so a little wider. Pay special attention to the way I've flattened my paint down so that when I slide my knife up I can get a nice even roll of paint. Not too big. And now I'm going to use my palette knife and I'm going to sort of follow the shape of the tree on a, on a nice little sort of looping action and apply a thin coat of this lovely dark brown paint to the tree trunk. And I want this to be a little bit textured. When I put the highlights on, there'll be something for it to grip to. And I'll do that right hand side first, and then I'll use the sort of the back of the knife blade just to do the left hand side of the tree trunk. And don't worry if you don't get it perfect. Trees aren't smooth, they're usually a bit knobbly, so a few lumps and bumps are quite good. And they give good places to put branches on. As you can see, I've nearly completed this one now. Now for the highlights, I've got some of this softened white paint that we use for the highlights. And again, a small roll of paint, just little. And I pulled my paint out flat and just gather some up. 
And this is important that we do that nice light touch with the knife and we do a little bit of a sort of curving stroke with it to indicate that the tree is slightly round. And it's very gentle, just a touch and go. And as soon as you start to move with the knife, try and lift off with the edge of the blade. And we're just gonna highlight the right hand edge of the tree trunk. We'll do something with the other side in a moment. And you can see just touch and go, touch and go. A little looping action. There we go. But it takes a little practice. It took me a little while to get the, the technique just right, but when it works, it looks smashing. And there's the other tree getting its little bit of highlight as well. And you don't have to go fast. Do nice slow strokes. They work just as well. There you go. Even I can't resist fiddling occasionally. Now for the other side of the tree, I want to mix up a pale blue color. It's going to be reflected light. So I'm using a, a little bit of phthalo blue and some of the softened titanium white paint. It doesn't have to be a brilliant bright blue color, but light bounces around in the painting and it could be being reflected off of the snow behind the tree or something in the distance could be referring the light back onto the tree. And this goes down that left hand side of the tree and it's just a very small touch and go much smaller than the highlights on the right, just barely a little bit of a bluish tint and it really makes the tree pop. I'll put some on the right hand tree and I'll put a little bit on the left hand tree as well. And if you struggle with the big blade, then you can always turn the knife around. There's a the short blade that you can get into some of those little tricky areas, but my favorite is the big blade covers the area nicely. And there you go, the finishing touches to the left hand tree. Now, time for some branches. I've got a, a thin liner brush here. Sometimes they're called riggers, but they're just very, very thin brushes. And I've got a, a few drops of linseed oil or thinners, whichever you have. And I'm gonna thin down that dark chocolate brown paint and I want the paint to be really nice and runny and get your hand right down the other end of the brush handle. And I'm aiming for some of these little dark areas on my tree trunk. I don't want to start against that thick white paint. And notice how I use my fingers just to wiggle the brush. And it gives you some lovely, knobbly little branches. Now, that would be very hard to do if you were holding the brush down near the bristles. This way you can just use your fingers and a small movement and you get these lovely wiggly branches. Notice how I go along the branch each time and then I go off at an angle this sort of thickens up the main part of the branch and it saves having to have a steady hand to land on the branch each time. So it's just an easy way of adding more sort of side shoots to each branch without having to land exactly in the right spot each time. It's a neat little trick and you will find that you can quickly add lots of little extra details. Now I'm going to do lots more on the left. I'm going to do a little bit of time lapse through this. And I'm going to build these trees out and fill that top of my painting with all this lovely detail. I'm going to add some nice bushes to the bottom of my tree. I'm going to start off with my one inch brush. This is the one I, I originally applied the blue paint with to the sky. And you can see my brush has got, it's got a rounded side and it's got a crease on the other side. And I'm going to pull the brush one direction through the paint 
And I'm going to go with that rounded side. You can see that I'm looking for a, a nice texture. This Remember, this is quite stiff, dark paint. So pull it through, give it a little press, and then round it side to the top. Very important. And press, 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 press. Don't let the brush skid. Just want to give it a little push. Do some on the other side as well. And you see it just covers up the base of those trees. You need to load frequently for this and make sure you get a good texture there for the highlights to stick to. I like to have two brushes, one for dark and one for light. And this is my light brush, one I use to put the patch of brightness in the center of the painting. And I'm going to use the same technique, rounded side towards the direction I'm pulling. Um, but this paint has been softened with some liquid white, so you don't have to press too hard. And look at the end of the brush. You want to see it's all nice and open and lacy, not a big thick blob. But rounded side to the top, and this time gentle pressure. Just, just off of the brush to the canvas, and the paint will stick. Once again, don't be too keen to over highlight everything. Leave a few dark areas here and there. You need that dark to give the contrast between the, the snowy bits and the shadowy bits. But it's very tempting though to fill it all in in one go. I just come back in a little bit of extra bright colour and in the side of those little dark shadows I can pop another layer in. Just an extra layer of detail. You can get into your paintings. And once again, I'm back to my fan brush. I'm just going to pull out the shadow from the base of these trees and bushes. And again, be sure to try and follow the lay of the land so you get the impression that the, the trees are standing on a little bit of a, a hump in the ground. And then finally, little fiddly diddlies with scratchy sticks and twigs. All those little touches of detail that everyone loves to see in a painting. And now the big reveal. Just pull off these tapes. Let's have a little play with our painting. I like to sometimes extend that tree through the frame. So it's coming from the background to the foreground. But it's optional. If you like to do it, that's great. If not, leave it alone. Don't forget to bring a few little branches through from the background to the foreground as well. Finally, a signature. If you've enjoyed watching this demonstration, don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the little bell, leave a comment. It all helps to grow the channel and I thank you very much for your time. But from me and baby Henny, well, time for a rest I think. Happy painting people. <laughs>